John here guys and today we're talking about the FPV cycle mini immortal T antenna and here we have it next to a full-size immortal T and it looks very reminiscent of each other but much much smaller Do I look cool now? Mr. Ice. It's almost as if the full size was created in a lab designed for the ultimate amount of perfection, but only to find out that these two were actually twins. Who are you? I'm Vincent's brother. We're twins. That's right. But a lot of that, a lot of us are okay with a little bit of reduced performance to be able to run Crossfire comfortably on our micros. So you can see the packaging actually does eventually end up getting a TBS logo right here. Because uh, at first, I guess they didn't want to claim it, but then they realized how much it was beloved and it was embraced after all. And I've been using it on a couple of builds. One is the Ethix Cinerat right here. Um, it is designed with an Immortal T holder right here at the front. But when you look at people using the full size, the Immortal T runs like way all the way across the front past the ducks. I mean, look how far that thing runs right there. And so I wanted to try this thing out. I did note that some racers were reporting serious range issues with this thing, uh, like Heart of America FPV, but he did note that he attached it to the arm. I made sure and put it in this little TPU camera holder couch thing. And for me, it performed um, quite well. And then I also wanted to switch my first micro over to Crossfire. This is the Tadpole three inch space grade carbon. I don't think this is out yet guys, but hopefully it will be very soon. Um, Chris sent me this over to check out and I love this build so much. I designed this little Insta360 Go mount for it so that I could get some excellent footage on this thing. This is a match made in heaven. And a lot of people are putting, again, full size Immortal Tees on their micros. And look at, you can, you can see it's wider than the whole quad, or it's longer than the whole quad, it's wider than the whole quad. I mean, it just, to me, it doesn't make sense to mount that on there. You've noticed powerful logic. Okay. So what I did was I designed this little holder system for it. Um, these files are available on Thingiverse. So if you have a tadpole and you want to be able to mount this mini Immortal T, you can download it for free in the links below. Uh, or if you have any small frame that has um, two little screws on the bottom plate, similarly sized, it'll probably work for those as well. And this works really great. The goal was to get a little bit of distance from the rear, a little bit of distance from the bottom plate so that it's totally clear. And this is what I really use to kind of test the range. Now, when first asked to design and create this product, my understanding that was that TBS didn't really want to claim it as one of their products. Um, they acknowledge the fact that it was going to have reduced range, but the speculation was that for micro pilots, this would be a perfect solution and we're not trying to long range anyway. Um, and so at first it was like, you know, they're thinking that this was crap. Whoa, whoa, you tell me I'm the crap? No, this is not true. Well, wait a minute, Julius, I want to hear this. You tell me that I am the leftover crap that I'm no good? He's wrong. No, it's not crap. It's awesome. And I've done a little bit of range testing with this thing. I've installed it on this little Armitan Tadpole 3 inch at the rear right here. And I went to try and think of the best way that I could test the range. So I took it to the most unideal place that I could find, but that would allow me to fly a, over a football field to give us a good idea. So I sat probably 30, 40 yards on one side, flew it to the other end of the football field, past the other side, but there was also a set of power lines running like between me and the field. So that probably adds a bit of interference uh, to that mixture. And I'm running the Crossfire um, micro 
TX module. So I'm you know putting out small amounts of power. This thing made it very comfortably to about 170, 180 yards um, or meters before it started giving me a low signal alarm. And I'm not sure how much further it could go once you get that signal, but I would always turn around and fly back. So it crossed the whole football field, went about 30 yards on one side and about 40 yards on the other side. And that amount of distance can give you an idea about just how far you can go with that. So I'm guessing without the power lines in the way and under ideal conditions, you could probably go about the same range as an XM Plus, which I would say is about 200 to 300 meters, um, possibly farther under ideal conditions. But for a lot of us that fly these micros, for a lot of us that do basic freestyle or racing, we never fly outside of that range. If you're going to go long range, use the full size. But if not, save a couple of grams, save a couple of hassle building, put it on a small quad just like this, and this is perfectly fine. And uh, I understand that they didn't really want to create this at first, but after a lot of convincing from Kebab, they went ahead and did it. And I'm so glad to see that this is available for us. So. Links in the description below for this little mount and for this thing. It's only $3.99 and you can actually get it a little bit less with the code that I'll have for you guys below. So when I was switching over to Crossfire, I really noticed how much the lower latency of the Crossfire system allowed me to be a better racer, allowed me to be a better freestyler, allowed me to do maneuvers that I didn't think were possible for my skill level, but I realized that it was the latency of my signal holding back some of the ability that I had in order to complete maneuvers with the way that I fly. The way I fly is I fly by sight, I see the obstacle in front of me, and I'm, you know, I adjust accordingly, not so much by memory. People that fly by memory may have a different experience, but um, my supposition was that Crossfire was not going to make a difference for micros because I'm flying much slower. So, but I wanted to really get a stronger signal link on this thing. The way that I had my XM Plus antennas was touching the carbon and I was having a couple of fail safes with that thing. So I really wanted to um, boost the reliability of this. So I installed a right hand circular polarized antenna in Crossfire um, because I was gonna be attaching this Insta360 Go $200 HD camera on board and I didn't want to crash it or lose it. So what I found was what I was hoping not to find. I was hoping that Crossfire was not going to be as noticeable on a micro as it was on a five inch, but it is. I was instantly imbued with the abilities to be able to do greater freestyle, have greater confidence. I did a couple of power loops into some gaps on a very windy day. And the look on my face had to just been like laughing to myself because I was like, oh my gosh, it's better. Which means, <laughs> the reason why I was hoping that it wasn't better because I was hoping that I wasn't going to have to swap out my receiver on every single micro quad I own too, like I've been doing on my five inch. But if you want the confidence, if you want the ability, if you want that instantly increasing everything to do with the maneuverability of this, you need the Crossfire system on board. I don't care about long range for these micro builds. So this is totally fine. I love, love how easy it is to mount. It gives you a clean signal away from the bottom plate, away from the rear, and look how good that is. So this will probably be useful on a variety of builds that they have um, two rear screws at the back that are of a similar distance. So feel free to download that print for your own. This thing is only $3.99. You have a link below to get it for even cheaper.